Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. As you remember from the last episode, I did some forestry stuff. I actually did quite a bit of forestry stuff, stuff and made some trees and like that. Let's go have a quick look at those trees because they're actually slightly different. You'll see that these are ordinary Minecraft birch trees. And the forestry ones are over here. And you'll see they aren't brown in autumn as it is because it's of course it's pumpkin time and you'll see that this one is a forestry spruce red leaves and they haven't gone any color and the same as this the oak hasn't gone hasn't changed and there is the apple oak from forestry and that was the dark oak wasn't it and this one's the silver birch so they haven't changed color but also i've noticed that the spruce trees don't grow into fours you get that pretty quite a large tree but it doesn't actually make a four like it does in minecraft so that's something else to be aware about <coughs> if you're doing that so you don't have to plant them in batches of four so actually that's the first thing on my list here let's look at my list today look at trees okay excavate tree <laughs> actually that's not really a tree it's a, mag it's a magnus slime tree i was going to show you if you i tried to use the axe on this last time didn't i well, let's this time, let's not use the axe, let's use the excavator. Come around here. And sure enough, that does work. Let's go at the top here. Hopefully we'll get some saplings. Just, ah, two that time, yeah, good. So we'll plant that back again, and that gives us another, what, four, six, is a 24. Uh, slime balls, which is quite good. <clears throat> That's by far the easiest way. <laughs> so I've got nine of those now. And the saplings go on there. Oh, of course, I didn't put that chest out. It's still packed. In fact, it's in here. It's one of these two packs containers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these three out and put them into here for the time being. I'd, I probably do need it, but we'll, we'll leave it. I need to find a better place for them. I haven't thought where I want to put it yet, so I'll leave that one. And then this, the sea lantern. I was out looking for the sea lantern. I found one underwater. It's just underwater by itself. So I went and mined it up, but at the same time I mined up the surrounding prismarine, because we have a use for that. We can, I think, so what can we use it for? We can chisel it, we can crush it both ways. In fact, that would actually then, that's one of the uses of the hydraulic press is to make things on the ingot mold and now the last one I think the crafting recipe is here we can make chimneys actually I thought we could make Tinker's Construct stuff but maybe I need something else for that um, well, I'll come back to that in a minute don't need to do that it's not my plan today but oh let's go back to the use of that again I'll try again So the overworld here, if you look at this, it says drops. If you break this with a silk touch, I still use the silk touch to get that. And if you break it, then you can get 3.9 from the, with a Fortune 3 picker. So let's try that. Because uh, there is a reason for this. Let's put it down here. This is the Fortune 3 pickaxe, pick I think a Fortune 3, yep. Yeah. And it's still got another modifier. Oops. <laughs> it's a very aggressive. Uh, so I did get 3. didn't get 3.9, but I got 3. Now we have a uses for these things, and that is in Tinker's Armoury, or Armourist Construct. So we'll look at the uses of that. We can make another <laughs> sea lantern if you've got five. It's a bit bad, isn't it? Brewing, you can brew with it. And mixing, you can also, basically mixing and brewing are the same. So that's a, a sort of a the modern way of brewing <laughs> as opposed to this way. Uh, right, let's have a look. It didn't actually show me, did it? It must be in the book. Now, where is the book for Tinker's Armourist Construct? If I can't find it straight away, I shall take a quick... Ah, uh, uh, that one, possibly. Yes, that's the one. Yep, Armourist Construct, good. So, if I add this to a helmet, combining some prismarine crystals and glass, should create some type of portable air pocket in your helmet, which you can use to breathe underwater. So stores oxygen over time when equipped uses oxygen when underwater can be applied to helmets in its single use 
So that was what I was planning to do for this. So we basically have then we have the um, respiration, whatever. I don't know what level of respiration is. Single use, so you can't presumably do too many levels. There's a block of slime leaves over there. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's the plan for that now. I don't know what I can do on this exact helmet I've already got. We can try. I've got some glass. Because the helmet I've already got some, got night vision on. And I'm not sure whether or not these actually will work. Combine the two together. So we need the helmet on first, which is here. It's a bit damaged, my helmet. I probably should repair it a bit. So we need two pieces of glass. I mean, I'm using an armory for giant and one of these. So that will then give me amphibious. <laughs> cool. In fact, while I'm doing that, I might as well repair it as well. So let's put the other stuff in here. Try to remember where it is. No, actually, I won't do that. I'll put it in the other chest up here. This is my odds and sods chest, so it's so to speak. Where I've got everything in it that's to have. Oh yeah, I went to actually went back to the crystal biome and got some more quartz. I got some quartz stuff. I went I went back for the diamonds and emeralds mostly, and I got some more tracks. I got two stacks of tracks when I was there. And there's still quite a lot more down there. Whether I want to use them or not, I'm not 100 percent sure. So right now. So I just need some iron and I'll repair the armour because it's getting a bit broken. How many will use? I'll take a stack. We won't use anywhere near a stack of course. Because this is arm iron armour so it's fairly cheap. So let's put that in there. And this takes durability anyway so I used one. That's not too bad. Let's have a look at my other stuff I've got on. Probably, it's probably time for them to give them a little bit of a mend isn't it? So let's use one. That uses one. Actually, they're fairly cheap. What was the fourth one? Our feet. Right, so we can put those back on again. So now I've got water breathing. That looks really. <laughs> I'm not going to say what that looks like. <laughs> now, this is also working quite nicely, as you can see. It's picking up various bits and pieces that don't go into the uh, storage system directly. So, and what I'm doing with those, I'm taking bows like this and I'm just disposing of them straight away. And it just comes to my little lava pool. It doesn't make any pollution. This sort of surprised me, which is, uh, which you would expect it possibly to make some carbon, but it doesn't. So that's fine. Don't mind about that. Pollution itself is there's quite a bit of pollution over there. That's because I did the coal mine over there. In fact, I was cleaning it up a little bit. So, um, and over here is a kimberlite mine, a lim a limonite mine. That's right. Yes. Uh, it's a very difficult one. It's in a it's in a it's in a cave system, and underneath the cave system, it's got lava underneath it. It's really awkward. In fact, I'll tell you what. Let's go and have a quick look at that. So I'll, I'll go back. I'll, I'll stop now and just be back in a second there. And as you can see, there's a big chasm over here, and on the right hand side of that, there's some uh, limonite ore. So I've been busy mining this up. It's not the nearest source to me at the moment, uh, but it's not the easiest of things to mine. There's a lot of caves going off here, so I keep blocking off the caves like that. Um, not completely safe, of course. I could take this water away, and I just keep mining. And it's all spread out as well, so that's it's really weird. Let's just break this block while I'm here. Did I not catch it? Ah, it went down. Ah, oh, that's awkward. <laughs> Where did it go to? I'm sure it went down. Ah, oh, yes, I picked it up. I just said to go click. So as you can see, this is quite a this is quite a a big mine or cave system. You can see it on the mini map, in fact. So you do get them in cave systems, and oh, actually, it's the second. I found when I was doing um, in the actual mine mine, I also found um, some hematite just by chance as I was digging, clearing stuff away, just just exploring a bit, and I came across some hematite, hermite as well, which, oh, hematite. Can't remember. It's the, it's the other iron one anyway. You get in small batches, 
and I got 39 of those. So I'll be back. I'll go back to base, and we'll start doing the actual core of the this episode, which is going to be the crusher. So I'll see you in a few seconds. Right, I'm back. I found some. I found some kohosh, uh, which is a rustic ingredient. I planted it here, and I planted some ginseng root as well. Uh, You'll see, in fact, I actually planted some more where the rustic stuff is. I'm not sure if they actually grow sort of and spawn more. Anyway, we'll find out. They're useful ingredients in the in their recipes for potions and the like. And of course, it's uh, it's harvest time for pumpkins. But let's get on and do the thing I want to do today, which is the the crusher. Now, <laughs> the usual problem. I've got to find a place to do this. I think here might be okay. Let's have a look. It's three by three, if I'm rightly. So I should have in my bag what I need. I think these are the ingredients that we need. But I haven't got the projector and I haven't got the book. So let's go and get that because <laughs> I don't know how to lay it out, at least without the book. And I think that's in the chest, ready to do it for today. Not in that one. It should be in this chest, in fact. There's the book, and the projector is. I can't see it for trying. Here, good. So let's get the book open and find the crusher recipe. So I'm not sure. I'll do it the quick way. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. And so it's a way of increasing the yield of ores, which is basically like all the other stuff so let's take that now and put this into the book into the projector and we should then have a recipe so it's three by three by five so it's now does that mean it's three after just check the book actually because uh, now i'll see on the ground don't we so it looks like it's three high okay i'll move that out so that's very distracting and we'll come and put it down so i need a five three by five space which this looks like it's about big enough I think that's not too bad let's put it down there so I just right clicked it and then it stays so what do we need okay it's actually highlighting I've got the block in the hand so I've got the light engineering block so just as you can see it tells you where they are so they're the ones oops wrong one it's got red which is great it tells you that as well I'll just that was a miss hit so to speak I uh, would like to get rid of that one oh, I do need the hoppers I think I'll leave those later on I don't need these two and three we'll bring back the other bits and pieces that we need for this and a big X is that everything? I think that's everything so I can break break that with a big X so let's go back to the light engineering box oops I missed again I've got to hit the floor of course <laughs> and you and can't leave one that you don't need so let's go and grab that one good so what's the next thing that's here these are scaffolding so we'll just highlight the scaffolding it's funny you know right good so that's completed this layer so what have we got on this layer I can't see exactly but I see these are light engineering blocks yeah so we'll put those down here. Actually, it does make it. I wasn't sure whether it was, this was going to make it easier to start with or not, but I think it it does seem to make it easier. Here's the redstone block here. What have we got here? Ah, these must be the fences. And the last one must be the hoppers that's all we got left so we need nine of these let's put them down on top of the fences that's right oh yes hopefully I brought my hammer with me but I don't think I did so that's it it's green that means it's complete fantastic now I better have to bring my hammer with me did I no well, let's go and shift these into the crusher while we go past now let's use these on the in this crusher. I've got, I've got these two ores from that one. Oh, you see, oh, this is Kohosh. That's what Kohosh looks like. Well, I know I'd got some, but I didn't know what it looked like. So I thought next time I'd just plant it and see what it does look like. So hammer is here. It's 
It's interesting, it shows the whole structure in the outlook outline. And I think you right click the redstone block. Nope, try the one of them. <laughs> so we've got hazardous machine, goal reached hazardous machine. Okay, that probably means that we don't want to be getting into it. Have I done it the right way around? Now, how do I get rid of this projection thing? Let's move it out of the hot bar. Okay, good. Now, you know, this looks like an input. This looks like a redstone control. This looks like a connector. Doesn't really look like a connector. Where do I put the power into it? This is normally, it would look like an on off type switch, isn't it? Tell you what, let's get the book out. I'm not sure it's going to tell me in the book. So, each one creates two dust which can be smelted. The industrial size crusher isn't a quick way of doing this, so the machine's processing speed depends on the power supplied to it. Okay, fair enough. Applying the redstone signal to the control panel on the front will halt the crusher's process. And I think that's the, the on straight ahead on the left hand side is the control panel. So that's the front, okay. We'll hold the control. This behavior can be inverted using the engineer's hammer. The structure can be formed by right clicking the center block of the front. Oh, we did that, okay. The front is a side with the structure with the light engineering blocks at the bottom. Okay. Now, why do I put the power? Tell you what, I'll do some research and come back in a few seconds. All right, here's the connector. It looks like the connector. It took a while to find it. I was trying all sorts of things. So I'll link that to this post up here, and it should give it, get power in it. And as you can see, it's actually getting power. So we have to be careful with this machine, as it says it's a hazardous machine. And indeed, it is a hazardous machine. It's actually off at the moment. So if I can, I right-click that from here. Or do I have to use a redstone control? It's here. I probably have to put a lever on this one. Have I got a lever with me? I used to have a few levers around. I do. Let's put a lever on. Hang like that. And turn it on. Is that working? Can I get up to see? <laughs> That's a challenge, isn't it? Doesn't look like that's working. So what have I done wrong? So it's powered up. Let's put some of these into here. Oh! It doesn't work until you put something in it. So that'll come out somewhere. Now where's that going to come out? Probably here. Yeah. So we've got four iron grit from immersive engineering. Fantastic. It's not as good as the... Um, well, it's not as good as the, the, the crusher and um, the sieve and the, what's this one called? Forgotten. Uh, Multi-block. <laughs> it's not as good as this combination. Um, I think this is a crusher as well, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, I've, do you know, I've completely forgotten. That's just dreadful, isn't it? Multi-block Minecraft. Uh, magnetic craft. Uh, I think that's crusher. It's not as good as that one um, because it doesn't give you the extra outputs. But there's a bug in this one where you, <laughs> I'm losing half the outputs anyway, so I might as well use this crusher, mightn't I? <laughs> and then we can feed that, of course, into here, which is what I will do. So uh, I've got no ores to crush at the moment, so it's all set up and working. So let's have a look at my list today. So, I've looked at the trees, we've looked at the bees, oh well, we sort of haven't looked at the bees, we've done the crusher, I'll quickly look at the bees, the bees are only just over here, but I think you might have seen, noticed as I was going past anyway. You see the bees are working all the time, and in here we should have some more honeycomb, we've got 16, it's not very much actually, I'm not getting very much honeycomb from the bees when they've not got frames in them. And this one has got 7 in it. So we actually look inside the hives now. I've got 23 meadows drones. And this one thing which basically means it's got nearly a stack of forest drones. I'll explain why that is important later on when we actually get to cross cross breeding bees, which you'll, by the looks of it, it's not going to be too far away. So next thing, automated redstone. Now 
No. I probably should have put those in the smelter, shouldn't I? No, I'll get them. Put them in this chest for the time being. Let's give it a sort. Is that everything I want to put in this chest? We'll put the we'll put the projector away as well, and the book. Yeah, I'll leave the book in there because I was thinking about doing it somewhere else. I'll put those two chests down as well over there. One of not appropriate places, but one of them's fine. So now, automated redstone. What I would like to do is the filter. Let's get rid of this one. Redstone. So the one I want to do is the power filter. And I think that's the item valve, the energy valve, and the fluid valve. It's the energy valve is the one I think we want to do. Yes, so it can control or measure energy flows with redstone uh, signals. So it supports RF and Tesla. And RF is basically uh, forge energy, I think. So we'll see. And so therefore it's that one. So it's not a complicated recipe. It's basically slab, stone slabs, gold, redstone block, uh, redstone comparator, and this, the stupid signal wire which is one gold nugget around eight solid redstone wires and redstone wires are just redstone with some iron bars so let's get the iron bars out of that we've got six i've got some red recipes in here so we needed six didn't we i'll do 12. now i'm going to bound to need those let's just get two of these out uh six isn't it seven never mind now that doesn't sh oh it does actually show up some of the recipes don't show up in here now we get 12 two sets give us 24 that's fine that's basically what I wanted to do anyway so now we should be able to make this redstone filter we need the comparator I've got one comparator left I remember that one and some stone slabs if they're anywhere they're going to be in here uh, nope I've got some cobblestone slabs and some levers I'll take those levers out actually because put those back into my backpack cobblestone slabs stone slabs that'll give me six that'll be fine so the filters this one so what we're missing a block of redstone I guess and this thing which I haven't done yet we get two of those that's fine and a block of redstone I'll take one of these out of here. I think that was was that it? I think it was gold, wasn't it? Two gold two gold ingots. So we should be able to make this up now. And we also need to make a display, I think, because that'll control it, but it doesn't show you what the items are. Now they've got in this pack. Um an LED display, so a signal LED display and an oscilloscope. So we want this one. So that should be not too difficult. We're missing glowstone. I've got some glowstone from actually from witches, which is great. And that slowly goes up. Look at the number of ender pearls I've got. I might have to put a uh, relatively soon, I might have to put um, a void upgrade on that one. Probably should do it anyway. Um, one of these. So we should be able to make one of these now. I don't. I've never used this before. It's first time. So if I, if I mess up, I mess up. Now what I'd like to go and do is to measure the power output of, say, a thermopile. Now I've got some ice. We've got some ice from before, from winter time. Actually, it's coming up to winter time soon. Anyway. And I've got this ice in here now. What I can do with this, we oh, haven't made the thermopile. Though. Let's make the engineer, uh, most of engineering thermopile. I'm not sure what the recipe for it is. Let's have a look. This one, no, that's the thermoelectric generator. That's the one I think I want. No, the thermopile. For, oh, that's the magnetic craft one. Aha, uh -huh. uh, this one will do. So we need constant templates five of those steel ingots three and one copper coil block 
So we need the copper coils, which we might be able to do straight away. Right, we need eight of those. And we need, um, let's get back to that one of these. So we need, probably should be able to do that one. Now the other constantan ingots, I've got some constantan. That bronze, five. Electrum six, ah, oh, just, just enough. So we're gonna make those into plates. We've got some steel ingots. It's coming up to night time again, and I said I don't like working at night. <laughs> I'll put those in there. They should come back as plates. They should get hammered. Right, I'll come. I'll, I'll come back in a few seconds when everything's been made. Right, everything's been made. Now that's what Jinton looks like. So now we can actually make the thermoelectric generator. I think we can do it straight away. Actually, let's have a look. Oh, yeah. No problem. So we can get this some um, electric generator. What I want to do is to measure the power that comes out of it. So we've got some ice and we've got some lava. I think I've got a bucket of lava around. If not, we'll just get one out of the system. Oh, of course it's autumn time, so as I go past, I, I mine up a few of these things. I've got a few, quite a few now, so that's not bad. And there are some uh, Minecraft butterflies around as well, forestry butterflies around as well, but not just here, over by those trees. So let's get the bucket. I should have one. Some other words you can do. Take one out of here. So I can just take one out of this tank. There's eight buckets of lava in that tank anyway, so it's fine. Every time I go mine, you can find some lava. I pick it up, put it in a bucket, and just bring it home again. Oops, that's already full. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do is to try powering this up now. I think actually it's not the hottest thing. Do you know? I've remembered what I was trying to do. If I look at the book again, which is of course is in here, the very best thermoelectric stuff is, I believe, a block of uranium. That's actually one of the reasons I built the crusher. So let's go back here and go to the top. We can then type in um, thermoelectric generator. I don't have to type it all in. So it then tells you about the different gradients between the two sources. And I think, here we go at the bottom. So we've got a block of uranium is 2000 Kelvin. And ice is, my, is 273, which is basically zero degrees centigrade. And packed ice is 200. So the difference between these is the maximum. So uh, a magnum block, lava won't work in that case. So we can actually do blocks of uranium. Because over there in my first mine, there is some, and I didn't mine it up. I did actually mine it up, but then <laughs> I had to restore my game. So what I'll do is I'll go and um, see how much to, let's make this thing. I've got it prepared. Let's put it down somewhere. I've got a feeling packed ice will melt, but we can make packed ice. So I've got a chisel. Where's my chisel gone to? Where's that? I think I've got a chisel somewhere. I think it's inside, isn't it? It's been a while since I've used it, yep. So what we can do is chisel the ice. Now, when chiseled ice doesn't melt, so we can do that one first of all. Oh, of course, I'm doing that wrong, aren't I? Let's just do it like this. Right, click that. And put that into the pot. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what pattern we use, because we can use this one like that. So that doesn't melt in the, in the world. We can put this down wherever we want to. In fact, let's put it down. I think we can also break it with a pick. Pick, even if you use a, so, uh, a silk touch pick. So I think we can definitely break that. It won't melt. This ice will do. We can make packed ice as well. Now to make packed ice we use this machine um, and we put it into this mode. So we put that in there and it'll come through and it'll actually make packed ice. So that's the, this recipe is for the ingots. Strange one but there we are. It takes quite a while. So now we've got packed ice from Minecraft. I don't know whether this melts. I have to be honest with you. So we'll, it, it probably does melt. So let's just put it down somewhere that it doesn't matter if it melts. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit more difficult, isn't it? Uh, let's put it down there. And let's see if it melts or not. 
if it doesn't melt then we've got a perfect solution for that so the over here is the other is the other mine now just a second i just hold i have to do something quickly right i've got enough time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to the uh mine and mine up some of that uh i can't remember what it's called it is uh we'll see anyway i'll see you in a few seconds Well, I thought I'd show you this. This is core root from Rustic. That's another component that's used in um, alchemy or oh. brews. So I'm just going to, this is not, this is fairly polluted this bit, I've, but I've got my mask on, as you can see, my diamond respirator. And it's, I've done the mining of the, the uh, of the ore. So I'm just going back home now, but it's not so badly polluted here because the mine is, out of chunks so it's too far away so i'll be back in a second i went i'm back home well as you can see i'm back i'm just throwing these into here if i get them in that is <laughs> sometimes they fly over so these are the um uranium clusters so we get the uranium grit for that i thought the only use of that one as you can see you can hammer it with an immersive engineering hammer this basically marks generator we don't care about smelt it we can also smelt it but that's that gives you two ingots the crusher from this is what we're using we get a chance of lead grit and the arc furnace we can also do which will give us two uranium ingots so the crusher is the one i'm using let's get this last piece into here if i can that is i think i've thrown a whole lot of these on the floor somewhere just gonna have to pick them all up <laughs> I think they might have even gone over this side as well. So that's coming, these are coming out of the side here. We need to have in the first 38 so we get a good stack of this stuff. Let's just throw it up a bit. Not too high. <laughs> it is, it's a challenge. I need to do some automation on this. Probably best is to put a hopper on top of it, but um, I'll leave that for the time being. So I'll set it up. So is that completed? I don't know what's in here. 64 70 alright it's still working <laughs> tell you what I should do oh yes of course I know it's still working because it's making the noise if we just turn it off then it won't then it won't drop any more items I'll just go quickly walk around it to make sure that there's nothing there so we can then smelt this to get our block Let's shift those into them. They should come back as ing ingots, which is fine. But I don't think we've got any other uses for these. Let's have a quick check of the uses of that one. Smelt it, smelt it, smelt it. Basically, okay. The only thing we can do is smelt it. So I'll well put those into there. And then we'll get out of here the, the ingots, the uranium ingots. Hopefully we're getting enough power into this. That looks reasonably okay the green bars at the top and the voltage bars at the top and this thing is actually going cooler what surprised me a bit oh no it's gone up now before it was definitely cooler so that should actually be generating more power because that's the heat source for that one we just, I'm just waiting for nine ingots there we go so we can do our block so what I'm gonna do is put this block down see the ice is still here so let's just try and the packed ice is still here too and i don't know how long it takes to melt if it does melt even so we need to make a block of uranium like that let's put it down beside the ice over here like that and then we'll put this thermo generator in the thermo electric generator in the middle you can actually have put it on both sides so i could have two sides of uranium and two sides of ice because it's for there's basically six faces on this thing so now if i'm not mistaken i can put this energy filter on energy valve on here like that and i can put onto this but i've never done this before the um LC led display so that's generating none or it's actually not generating none it might be generating uh, hey, that's the, that's got an arrow on it, so that means it's going up. So let's now put a connector on here. Ah, I haven't got a connector. Well, I have got a connector actually. Let's just go and get one. And another day has gone by. 
<laughs> I've made things about five days making this episode. It's quite a long one. So I've got a battery and a and a and a, and a, and a connector here. Let's just pick those up. An LV capacitor, in fact, is what I've got. So I put the connector on top of this one. Ooh, of course, because I've got eyes, oh, isn't that right? So we put the connector on here like this. And then we could, should be able to connect that into the circuits. But I need some cable. And the cable is actually in that box down here. Where crate, where's the crate gone to? Here we go. That's the flower one, and that's the okay. So we need a cable, and maybe I'm not sure whether I need to put down the other one as well. So we'll see if it makes any difference. I can put this. I'm going to put it here, but I do need a second connector, and I haven't got any more connectors. <coughs> put it on there. I'll <laughs> slide along the ice again. <laughs> And then we'll connect this one across to there. So if it makes that, it gives us any output. Well, <clears throat> don't know. I'll tell you what, I'll come back a second, go and make another couple of connectors. I'll see you in a second. Right. I've got the um <clears throat> the connectors made. So let's just link this across to here. Uh, it doesn't show me anything. I'm not sure even if it's actually working. It's all at 99.5. No, it's not working. Which means I've got to figure this out. I think that's the right direction. You could got an interface on here. It basically checks the time every point one tick, and then limit the energy flow, which we're not doing. So the current flow is zero, and that should just connect into this display, which we've got at the moment is set to decimal. So we can change the color. We can change the, the formatting. That's not what we'll do fine for the time being. So I've just got to figure out now why I can't get power out of this. Let's try something else. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Now, is there a wrench? Can we wrench? Can we? No, we can't wrench that. Can we wrench it like this? No. Um, because what I'd like to do is to put it on its side. Let's try that. What happens if I put put this on its side this way? Is it stubborn? <laughs> it looks like it's going to be stubbornly insisting on going in that direction. Tell you what, I want to do is I put a connector on the bottom of this. So let's basically make a block on top of this. Have I got anything for blocks? Just just some lanterns. I know I'm running over time a little bit. I have to actually put two lanterns down, don't I? Because I need one for each connector. So we can break this thing now. Pick it up. And see if we can go up a bit higher. I need to go one more block, don't I? <laughs> can I not put a block on top of this? Um, I should be able to put a block on top of that. Oh no, I can't put a block on ice. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I can do it this way. Oh, actually, I don't need to do it that way. I can put the block on top of it now, can't I? So, I'm still messing around. I can put this here. Oh, this time it did work. Oh, okay, that'll do f just nice, not nicely, because I've now put it in the wrong place. Ha, ah, tell you what. Yeah, that's sort of what I'd like to do, but over here. Let's try that one. Maybe I'm messing around a bit too much here. <coughs> Don't mean to. So you can put it down, so you just have to get it from the right angle. Like that. But I don't want it on there, I want it on the other one. So let's just move it across. So this time I want it on here. Oh. And that time it goes up. Ah, okay. Tell you what, I'm going to, have to break this block. Tell you what, I'll set it up and come back in a few seconds. Well, I think being, that's an output. <laughs> it doesn't help me very much. Anyway, I've set it up. Let's see if it actually makes something. Let's, first of all, let's connect this up so it shouldn't connect. 
Well, <clears throat> so there's no power going through this. So let's just get into a position where we can change this to an input. Input. Well, <clears throat> it doesn't seem to be working. Do I have to set this? No, that's just a connector, isn't it? And that should go that way around and go into there. But it hasn't charged it up. And that's, I presume it's generating power. We can check that. Let's break, let's break this connector here. We shall break that. We'll break this. And then we can be able to break this connector. There's a lot of connection breakage, but there we are. So if we connect that to here like that, and then just go straight across. Sure enough, it's working. So I'll have to go and figure this out for next episode. So until <laughs> I've got my respiratory. Oh, yes, because I was in the mine and it was polluted. Uh, <laughs> so until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.